Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 166, a child's progression when grouping to count items. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. This week's positivity comes from my email inbox. After last week's behind the scenes video about the move of my office, which you can see behind me, this is different. I got this email from Helene. Best wishes on your new space, Christina, and thank you for sharing your personal life. Thank you for your constant smile, enthused support, and generous, nurturing, inspiring information which has and will continue to transform teaching and learning math. I adore you and mention BMM in every professional learning session and coaching. Enjoy your growing family. Stay well. Well, thank you, Helene, for this nice email and for all that you are doing out there to help build math minds. All right, so in a few weeks, I'll be opening up registration to my online courses for teachers, the flexibility formula, which are all about how kids in kindergarten through fifth grade build their flexibility with numbers. So I've been looking back through some of my favorite books that gave me the knowledge about how kids build their understanding of numbers. If you've been around for a while, you know how much I love cognitively guided instruction. Their most popular book is Children's Mathematics. But after that book, they also wrote Young Children's Mathematics, Cognitively Guided Instruction in Early Childhood Education. Now, I believe it's important to know the whole progression of students' learning of mathematics. And so even though you might teach, let's say, third grade, it's important to know the trajectory of your students' learning. Towards the end of this book, in the chapter about extending counting to develop grouping and base 10 understanding, they lay out a progression of how kids group items when they're counting. Now we eventually want kids to group by tens, hundreds, and so on, or by groups that could make it easier to use their understanding of multiplication. However, we can't just jump right into that if they haven't had experiences with counting sets that lead them into counting by those grouping systems. Throughout pages 130 to 136, the authors describe the progression but here's a little summary. First, they start by grouping by attribute, like color or size. Then they might group into a quantity, a specific quantity. Typically, it's one that's easy for them to skip count, but they might just decide they want to use their favorite number instead and group by that number, even though it's not easy to count by. Now, in this stage, some kids will count by the amount of each group that is in there, but some kids are able to create equal size groups, but then they need to count one by one by one to determine the total. So just because they group by the same amount in everyone doesn't necessarily mean they're using that amount to actually count up the total. And then they will finally start into grouping by tens or hundreds, you know, as they progress up. So how do you help students go through this progression? Basically, counting experiences. <laughs> On page 134, they write, children themselves will naturally choose to group objects by quantities that make the task of counting easier. The more often students count larger collections, the more you'll notice that they start grouping by tens. But one thing I want to hit on here is that these counting activities aren't just about having them memorize the skip counting sequence of whatever they're counting by. They're counting by fives or counting by tens, especially when they're counting by tens. We use a base 10 system. So these counting experiences are really an opportunity to help students really make sense of the structure of our numbers system. On page 136, they write, while children often learn to count by tens or rather count the decade numbers, often to 100, they do not necessarily connect a rote count of tens with the idea that each count of one ten contains ten ones. Grouping by tens in a collection allows the child to see 
what the quantity looks like when they alternate between counting tens and ones. From counting 10, 20, 30, to 31, 32, 33, and so on. The collection is a context that makes sense to the child and supports them to engage in problem solving around counting different units. So yes, we need to be providing lots of counting collection opportunities for kids, but let them play around with groupings that make sense to them. And as the quantities get larger and larger, your students will naturally find ways to group that make counting easier on them. As they start to group and thus count by tens, help your students pay attention to the structure and groups that they are making and counting. That idea that 10 ones is one ten is a huge deal. And make sure that the counting collections have multiple units so that they have to consider the tens and the ones, or as the collection gets larger, the hundreds, tens, and the ones. All right, until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds. <laughs> <laughs>